This is a short message about Enoch Burke, an Irish school teacher who has been put in prison for his Christian faith. Enoch Burke, I salute you. As a brother in Christ, I salute you and I give God thanks for your stand and I stand with you in that. In Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10, we read of this. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Now, that was the Lord Jesus speaking in Revelation chapter 2. <clears throat> now, in other countries of the world, in other parts of the world, it's not unusual for Christians to be put in prison. But it's unusual for Christians to be put in prison in the West. And the reason Mr... <clears throat> Burke has gone to prison is because of his Christian faith I believe and I intend to explain that and to stand by him in that but here is a headline in today's Irish Times quote Enoch Burke tells court even if he remains in prison for the next 100 years he will not compromise his beliefs the article goes on to say the teacher at Wilson's Hospital School in County Western Eath objects to advising, addressing a student with pronouns they and them. And he's currently in Mountjoy Prison, I believe, in Dublin. But <clears throat> what can we say? This man is a teacher who refused to use transgender pronouns. This man is a teacher, one of his pupils was a boy who was going to transition, in inverted commas, to becoming a girl changed their name from a boy's name to a girl's name and insisted that the pronouns they and them replaced he and him. This is common now. What's not common is that people stand and do something about it, that they don't buckle at the knees, they don't give in, they don't just go along with it for fear. Everybody knows that this is absurd, but most people go along with it for fear. And that's just, to me, like a communist society where everybody knows that what's happening is terrible, but nobody dares say anything because anybody who does gets sent to jail. Now, Mr. Burke has been shown himself willing to go to jail for his Christian beliefs. He has said that it is morally wrong and that it is wrong from a Christian point of view, from a standpoint, to use transgender pronouns and that it is morally wrong to use a girl's name for a boy. Again, I stand with Enoch Burke on this. What happened apparently was that he was suspended from teaching, and having been suspended from teaching, he then went back to the school and sat in an empty classroom and said, I am here to work. I fully support him in that. I know what it's like to lose your job for refusing to use transgender pronouns. I know how it feels. I know that ghastly feeling in the pit of your stomach when you know that what you're about to do is going to get you labelled as an evildoer, when you're going to be considered as a troubler of Israel, when you're going to be told that what you're doing is wrong and that nobody else does it, <clears throat> when you're going to be handled roughly. Suspending a teacher for such a thing is handling him roughly is handling him as if he wasn't a well-qualified, well-respected professional, but some kind of criminal or evildoer. See, there are those who say that he went to prison because he broke the court order that said he shouldn't go to school and teach. But he rightly says that the ban on going to school and teaching was a direct attack on his Christian faith. He did no harm by going to school and sitting in a classroom, but he showed his willingness to be a teacher and to do his work and to do it well and to do it properly. So whilst the courts say he's only gone to prison because he <clears throat> breached a court order, it's the court order itself that is so unjust, unrighteous and wrong. Well done, Mr. Burke. I stand with you. I pray that your pe God's people would stand with you as well. One of the most difficult things in taking a stand is that the rest of God's people, many of them, won't stand with you. They'll make excuses. Mr. Burke, in his stand, has done what's absolutely in the best interests of that pupil. <clears throat> 
Now, Mr. Burke's situation, his story has already gone around the world. And I came across one report on it which said a pupil was transitioning and he refused to use transgender pronouns. <clears throat> but again, it comes back to this question of transitioning. A boy can't become a girl. You can pretend that a boy can become a girl. You can give a boy the impression that he can become a girl and you can go along with him becoming a girl, but you are going to harm that boy for the rest of his life. Well done, Mr. Burke. Well done, Mr. Burke, that you did not go along with that. You stood up for your pupil. You showed compassion. You, Mr. Burke, showed professionalism in refusing to treat your pupils in that way. But Enoch Burke has made it clear that the reason he has done this is not first and foremost for those reasons. It's first and foremost because he's a Christian who fears God. And he can say for absolute certainty that this is wrong. And I stand with you, Mr. Burke. The Bible says in the beginning, God made them male and female. So theologically, it's not possible for a person to change sex. There are only two sexes. It's not scientifically possible for a person to change sex. It's not medically possible for a person to change sex. So it is the height of satanic malice that a highly professional teacher could end up in prison simply for saying what is true, what everybody knows is true, and standing up for what is right. Mr. Burke has done the right thing. I believe he did the right thing going back to school. He stood up for the Christian faith. He stood up for the Lord Jesus Christ. He stood up for the truth. Perhaps it's the school that should be put in prison. And you can't transition. You can't sanitize this by saying that a person can, tran can, can transition because it's a trip to nowhere. It's a trip that doesn't take you from male to female or female to male or any other supposed gender. It's not possible. Mr. Burke knows that. And my hope is this, just as the Apostle Paul said that by his chains, many more were made bolder to preach the gospel. My hope is that many more Christians, Christian doctors, you see, one of the problems I have is this. I lost my job as a Christian doctor for refusing to use transgender pronouns because I believe that would be sinning against God. And therefore I understand what Mr. Eno, what Mr. Mr. Burke is saying. And I stand with him. I didn't have to go to prison. I was branded as a equivalent of a Nazi for three years, very publicly and uh, in the NHS, but I didn't have to go to prison. Mr. Burke has had to pay a higher price than me. And I salute you, Mr. Burke, for being willing to do so. And for saying that even if they keep you in prison for a hundred years, you won't change your beliefs. Thank God for that, for somebody who's prepared to take a stand in the West like that in these days. But my prayer, my hope is this. You see, doctors can rescue teachers. We know that many teachers are compromised on this point. Don't question it. Promote it. But, and this is really important, as doctors, we could have stopped the entire thing in its tracks simply by standing up and saying it is medically impossible for a person to change sex. And we all know that as doctors. How absurd, how ridiculous. Now, there are a thousand Christian doctors out there who are using transgender pronouns. And I call upon you to stop doing it, to stand up for the truth, to recognise that God requires more of you than just going along with this and giving it a, a whitewash of kindness. It's not kind to lie to somebody. It's not kind to lead somebody up the garden path to hell, is it? Christian doctors should stand and speak up. Then the teachers will be empowered. But it's more than doctors and teachers, it's courts as well. Because how the court responds now and how the legal case progresses with respect to Enoch Burke will show up the courts for what they are. They should find him not guilty. They should release him. They should clear him totally. And every single person, every single person should be not put under the burden to use transgender pronouns. The only reason this nonsense continues is because Christian doctors, Christian teachers won't stand up. Mr. Burke has stood up. Praise God. Thank God for that. Perhaps sometimes as Christians, we don't realise that this is a spiritual battle. Behind this is the malevolent rage of the powers of darkness. 
and that in fact at the end of the day it's not the feminists or the Muslims or any of these people that can fight it. We are the only people who can fight through to the end this battle over transgender pronouns. And that is why I pray, I really pray, I really hope that Mr Birkstan emboldens many other Christians to speak up and say this is absurd nonsense and it's harming our children and it will harm them permanently unless somebody speaks up for them. Because it harms our children and it's absurd and it's against the word of God, it brings the wrath of God against our nation. Enoch Burke, Mr E. Burke, an Irishman, an Irish teacher, I salute you. There was another E. Burke, Edmund Burke, who was also born in Ireland. And Edmund Burke was a famous British politician statesman from the 18th century, who was known as the father of conservatism, and conservatism with a small c, not the conservative party we're talking about here. He was a man who had strong Christian convictions. He was a man who spoke out against injustice. Edmund Burke was known for his powerful speaking skills, gifts and abilities. He was an abolitionist. He spoke out against atheism. He spoke out against the French Revolution. He spoke out against deism. He spoke up for Christianity and he believed that Christianity is the only basis and the only foundation on which a society can truly function and flourish. E. Burke is an illustrious name and Enoch Burke is living up to it. May the Lord bless Enoch Burke. May the Lord help him. And may the rest of us also be willing to stand up. Stand up and if necessary go to prison. But stand up and speak the truth to a confused and perishing generation. Jesus Christ is that truth. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the only hope. And we must speak up for that in the days in which we live. Father bless Enoch Burke. Thank you for his stand for the truth. Be with him in prison. May it by his stand, Lord, I pray that not only would you fully vindicate him, that you would uh, just throw them into confusion, Lord, if they won't do what's right, if they won't do what's just, if they won't deliver him, if they won't have mercy on him, if they won't vindicate him, Lord, if they continue to harm children, Lord, I pray that you'd throw them into the utmost confusion. But My prayer is, Lord, that you yourself would vindicate Mr Burke, that you yourself, Lord, would strengthen him in prison, that you would help him, Lord, that you would deliver him and that he would be vindicated as a profoundly professional, excellent and good Christian teacher, Lord, and that he has preached and faithfully held to the gospel in these days in which we live. And Father, we pray that, that you would help Christians everywhere, Christian doctors, Christian nurses, Christian teachers, Lord, Christian lawyers, Christian judges, Christian politicians, if there are any, Lord, have mercy upon them. Oh, Lord, that there will be a great speaking up and standing up for the truth in these days. And this we ask and pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And it's an interesting thought, isn't it, that we have a new Conservative um, Prime Minister and had their first question time today. And there's some talk about returning, returning to Conservative principles can't return to conservative principles without the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank God for Enoch Burke.